Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here doing intro for Greg Brady on the Chinese internet sector for our October webcast. If I can just check that we're sending audio and images, if you can see us, if you can hear us, just raise your hand in the Go to Webinar application. Brilliant hands coming in plenty. Uh, I'll hand over to Greg in a moment. If you've got questions, pop them in the Q&A box as they come up. Uh, we'll take the questions at the end. And then as always, we are recording so we can, uh, you can get the video, probably be online share trading late today or early tomorrow morning, that being Friday. But with that, Greg, over to you. Thanks, Simon. Um, <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'll go straight into the content. So it's a <coughs> fairly, just a few slides. Um, we'll talk about, um, the China internet equity sector, um, talk about uh, generally, more generally, um, about the profitability of the internet sector globally, uh, look at uh, the market valuation multiples of the Chinese and the global internet sector, and then obviously, <coughs> for obvious reasons, with, with particular reference uh, to Tencent. Um, which is held 34% um, by NUSPASS, and then of course um, our recommendations uh, regarding NUSPASS itself. So firstly, uh, who's who in the zoo uh, in the Chinese internet market? Um, all these ones I've listed are, uh, are, are in fact listed in the United States. Uh, except uh, the ones at the bottom, uh, where I'm pointing to now with my cursor, Tencent is listed in Hong Kong, Mail.ru. Another um, associate of NUSPASS is um, listed in London. Um, some, some of these uh, listings in the United States would be in the form of an ADR or American Depository Receipt, in, in other words, as a secondary uh, listing. Um, and what you notice immediately when I look at the market caps by billions, you can see by far the, the biggest is Alibaba, which listed recently. It was the biggest IPO uh, in history at $25 billion. And then Tencent, um, also a, a big order of magnitude, bigger than the others. The, the next closest is, is Beidou or Baidu. Uh, which is the Chinese equivalent um, of Google. Um, in other words, its main activity is internet search, but of course there's a whole bunch of other associated internet services that go with that. And other <clears throat> global peers that I've listed there, you can see is Yahoo, uh, which has been totally eclipsed over the last 10 years by Google. And then Yandex uh, is, a, is in fact the Russian equivalent of, ba of um, Google and Beidou. Um, so if we go firstly to um, the ones where the main activities are e-commerce and e-tail. So e-tail basically is part of e-commerce. It's the, it's the biggest part of it and that's business to consumer. Um, and then other parts of e-commerce would be C2C or consumer to consumer and then uh, B2B or business to business. Um, <clears throat> so the global peers there are Amazon, uh, eBay, eBay by the way owns uh, Gumtree in South Africa and then there's Mercado Libra which is a, a business to consumer or e-tail uh, website, um, actually Argentinian company but uh, uh, basically uh, does business all over Latin America. Um, so, and then just to mention, uh, as I'll mention later, JD.com and 58.com are, uh, are associates of Tencent. Um, so 58.com's main activity is online classified. So that would, th those are typically, yeah, mostly C2C or consumer to consumer and there, and there what's being sold online is typically mostly services rather than goods as in as in the case of e-tail. Um, so then we've then an, another big uh, group is the social network services and, and the other diverse um, 
stuff that goes with it. So Waibu or Waibu is the is the is the biggest one there. Uh, also known as the Chinese version of Twitter. And then, um, <clears throat> as you may well know, uh, Tencent's biggest single source of revenue is its online games, and its next closest is is a Chinese company called NetEase. Um, so that's on an 11 billion uh, US dollar market cap. Um, but obviously, Tencent has in, has grown much faster in the online online games category than NetEase. Um, and interestingly, um, Alan Gray and its Orbis Fund held NetEase in preference to Tencent for many years uh, because of its low evaluation multiple, and I'm not sure if they still hold it. Okay, then Mail.ru is, as I said, uh, based in Russia, and, and it's really like Tencent, but just a, a smaller version of Tencent in, in, in terms of the diverse uh, internet services that it offers. So uh, until a few years ago um, when people thought of uh, in big internet companies or small ones for that matter, um, one always thought of them as lots of promise of profit for the future but really a lot of pie in the sky stuff and people not really taking them uh, seriously from from a real profitability point of view, but I, I think um, as you will see in this table and here, here are some of the larger global, uh, more profitable internet uh, or diversified internet companies, um, you will see that there's some, th these companies are actually <clears throat> very profitable already and, and will get more so, and it does stand to reason, I mean these are companies that own valuable intellectual property, the business model is easily scalable, so by that we mean they can easily handle a lot more um, volume and traffic uh, for for little marginal cost. Um, and as you can see by these EBITDA margins, um, you know, 40-50% in many cases, those are very good by any industry standards, uh, even the net income margin, very high. Um, and when looked at by return on equity, um, the, the highest ranking are Tencent and Alibaba. So notice uh, also interestingly that forecast revenues for this year to December 2014, um, Tencent is, is much the same, uh, it's 79 billion um, Chinese won, much the same as Alibaba but because of Alibaba's higher margins and higher profits, um, that is the main reason why Alibaba commands the much higher market capitalization. Um, forecast revenue growth, you can see, still very high um, this year, so um, 30, uh, 30 to 40% in most cases. Um, Interestingly, Amazon, if you look on the far right here, uh, profit, multi, uh, profit margins much lower than the others, but look at it, its enormous uh, revenues, so $90.9 billion. So to, put that, uh, to compare that to Alibaba, for example, um, Alibaba, to get, to get that figure of 73 to US dollars, you'd have to divide by approximately 6.2. So Amazon is, is famous for just growing in every possible way, in every possible segment of online uh, retailing um, and really sacrificing current profits for, um, for uh, just enormous um, revenues and growth in those revenues. Um, but it will increasingly monetize um, the, the, the huge revenue base that it's got. So another general um, attribute of these uh, larger, more successful companies is that they hold substantial non-operating investments in the form of other internet company associates and, and in nearly all cases, big net cash balances. Um, so the, these are not companies that have much debt at all. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Tencent consolidated in March this year much of its 
existing e-commerce interests in JD.com and it now holds 15% in that. Uh, it recently further increased its share in 58.com to 24.6% um, and it also holds 18% of Cheetah Mobile which is uh, another niche of the internet market. Um, so internet uh, Cheetah Mobile is also Chinese and its main activity is um, security and cloud services on uh, for, for mobile and for applications for mobile. Um, but so despite these these quite big and lucrative in investments that Tencent has got, they only at the moment contribute an estimated 7% of Tencent's current market value as estimated by our um, analyst at SBG Securities. So as I mentioned, uh, I think earlier Tencent and Alibaba are, have got the highest um, ROE um, in this group um, and I think the other reason why people are so excited about Alibaba being the the giant in the e-commerce market in China, it, it really is uh, quite dominant uh, in terms of its market share in e-commerce in China is that it's still got a lot of growth ahead and, and it estimated in its uh, prospectus that the compounded average growth over the next few years is going to be 27% in Chinese online commerce. Um, both Tencent and Alibaba um, are also major online financial services players in China. So by that we mean um, typically uh, payment services like PayPal, so, so 10, 10 pay, uh, 10 cents payment services um, subsidiary in China does uh, is pretty much the equivalent of PayPal. Um, Alibaba's got something similar. Um, they also sell um, savings products online as well. And they are not only expanding in China uh, in e-commerce but, but also uh, outside China and that's both in e-commerce services um, and and social networking. Um, so as I, I think I mentioned when we last highlighted um, NASPASS in our share rankings presentation in May, uh, I, and that was prior to Alibaba being uh, listed that you could get exposure to Alibaba um, through indirectly through Yahoo and SoftBank. Um, they still got big stakes in uh, Alibaba and of course now you can buy Alibaba directly on WebTrader but uh, the advantage to buying indirectly through these these two counters is that they are trading at a considerable uh, discount to the sum of their parts uh, at the moment uh, as estimated by most analysts so you are effectively would be buying Alibaba at a significant discount. If you wanted to invest more directly and I suppose in a, in a diversified way into China's internet sector. You can also go through some US listed ETFs. So I've, I've mentioned the Guggenheim one, CQQ, then there's a similar one from Global X, uh, NASDAQ China Technology, and then the Crane Shares one. Um, and just to point out that the Crane Shares one is the, the one that's most targeted towards pure China internet companies. The other ones um, are mostly uh, pure internet services but they've also got some hardware, uh, Chinese hardware companies in there like Lenovo. Um, and typically a, a company like a big internet player in China like Tencent uh, would typically make up I suppose around about 10% of these ETFs. So when we look now at the valuation multiples um, and here, here we've got a scatter plot of uh, enterprise value to EBITDA, forward EBITDA that is, so, so in other words a rolling 12 months forward and then we compare that to the forecast growth in EBITDA and this is based mainly on uh, consensus forecasts from Bloomberg. Uh, EBITDA growth in the second forecast year, so in so in other words from month 13 through to 24. Um, you will see that 10 cent here, the, the red dot um, 
lies a little bit above the value line, but it's pretty close to the average dot here, the purple one, um, at a 12-month forward EV EBITDA of 20.6 times. Um, and that, by the way, that multiple does not look at all scary uh, when you consider that our second year forecast EBITDA growth is 26%. That's very high and, and it's probably not going to slow down much from there. Um, the ones that do look significantly more expensive compared to Tencent, as I've mentioned, LinkedIn, Alibaba, Baidu, but um, the market seemingly is is um, factoring in even higher uh, future longer term growth in those cases. And then importantly uh, to point out, I haven't put in, um, or some of the companies are not in here like JD.com. Uh, JD.com hasn't got uh, much profit to speak of at the moment uh, because it is basically uh, much like um, Amazon, it's sacrificing uh, much of its present profit for, uh, for market share and sales growth gains. Um, so interestingly JD.com is, is more like the Amazon model of e-commerce where it uh, basically is, is a merchandiser, it takes inventory risk and it does the order fulfillment by itself, the logistics, the delivery, whereas the big difference with Alibaba is that Alibaba is more a, 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 a internet network traffic aggregator, so it, it basically outsources um, delivery and order fulfillment to third parties and, and it's really more like a middleman and it takes a, a, a small piece of, of the transaction value and uh, also makes advertising revenue as well. Right, so now we go, we focus more on Tencent and Nuspass. So what we have when we see the share price for Tencent, uh, this is in Hong Kong dollars, which is linked to the US dollar uh, so it's pretty close to a, what a US uh, dollar equivalent would be. Um, uh, as I think I mentioned at the time of the last um, uh, presentation on NASPASS in May, was that we had suffered a pretty major correction in March and uh, more recently in September, as you can see, we've suffered a uh, what I would call a mini correction not nearly as severe as March, um, and it looks like we're now steading from that. So I think another uh, buying opportunity is presenting itself in, in both Tencent and, and of course, Nuspass. And increasingly, um, you know, Nuspass, uh, Tencent is, uh, Nuspass is really becoming uh, pretty much ten, ten cent because as you can see in, in my current analysis of the value contributions, uh, ten cent is 85, 85.5% of Nuspass's uh, market value. Um, and in fact, if you add up the values of, of uh, ten cent and mail.ru, you already get to 1400 per share. Share price is only, as you can see here, um, 1,252 Rand. So you're actually getting the residual unlisted net assets for a negative 148 per, per share. And uh, the last time I mentioned this in May, at that stage it was zero. So the uh, sort of effective discount has got even bigger because you're now getting the other pieces for a negative value. Um, recently, our analyst at SBG Securities um, upped his price target for ten cent um, to 150 Hong Kong dollars. So that's quite high, quite a bit higher than the 118.50 it closed at yesterday. Today, Hong Kong closed another more than one percent up. So I would imagine uh, ten cent is up at least another one percent from here. Um, and then based on that, he also increased his NUSPAS 12-month uh, target price to 1,750 Rand. Um, so based on my current total sum of the parts value at the moment of 1,581 Rand 50, um, it's only 11% above that. But of course, one has to factor in 
a discount to the sum of the parts, which the market has always demanded for NASPASS, and, and it would be at least, I would think, about 15%. So just looking a bit closer, Tencent and, and in particular to its revenues and its revenue growth because that's, I suppose, the, the really big attraction um, to uh, big internet players like Tencent. Um, and what you can see in the first graph here, bar chart, is that um, Tencent has just really been um, increasing its dominance of the Chinese uh, online games market um, over the last few years and uh, in fact um, if, as you can see on the <clears throat> in this chart here um, it looks like this dominance will continue and in fact be further entrenched because our analysts um, forecasts are for um, revenue growth in its games to continue to be above its local and global peers um, and the, the global games market or online games uh, market is a, is a very big one. It's said to be even bigger than, than the Hollywood industry. It's estimated by uh, an outfit called New Zoo to grow 8% uh, in, uh, globally in um, 2014 to $81.5 billion. Uh, the majority of those revenues, as you would expect, are in Asia. So in Asia, online gaming, whether it's on consoles or PCs or increasingly on mobile devices, is is a huge is a huge market and growing, um, particularly in countries uh, like uh, Korea, Japan, uh, and China. Ten cents second major reven, revenue source is social networking sources. So it's it's big uh, brands there are QQ and then WeChat or Wexen. So Wexen is a brand name for its social network service in um, China and then WeChat outside of China. Um, and really that social network platform works very nicely synergistically with its other platforms like gaming and e-commerce. Um, complement each other nicely and there's a lot of cross-selling between the two and and uh, our analyst is forecasting also strong revenue growth uh, in the from S from the SNS line um, so 43% in 2004 23% in 2015 19% in 2016 so so these growth figures are tapering off as you'd expect um, as it come as they come off higher and higher bases but Still, um, still very high. Um, and then the, one of the major reasons why um, our analysts' forecasts for revenues have been have been increased, and, and I suppose other analysts as well, is that um, Tencent has shown a, a lot of success in its uh, penetration uh, of the market for mobile devices. So, so increasingly. Um, the internet traffic is is moving onto mobile devices, and and the happily for companies like Tencent, um, those uh, games and other stuff on the mobile devices uh, can be sold for uh, higher margins. So, lastly, for NASPASS, then if we uh, look again uh, at how how this translates into our recommendation for NASPASS. Um, we, as I as I said, we've got a target price of 17 rand 50. So that's uh, if it gets there in 12 months, that's offering you a total return of uh, almost 40 percent. Um, still got, despite uh, earnings being held back by development costs, still a pretty decent ROE. Um, these are in rands, by the way, 19 percent. Very small dividend yield, not much to speak of. Um, and then the PE uh, looks quite daunting. Uh, so this is to March uh, 2015 of nearly 40 times. So um, the, our analysts' uh, up, upgrade of the target price was based, uh, as I said earlier, on, on the uh, valuation and target price increase to 10 cent. 
and it really looks like the the size and the diversity of Tencent's internet offering in China should continue to drive the network effect benefits. Um, and by network effect, what we mean is that success breeds success. So as you get to a certain large critical size, uh, every uh, every uh, party uh, on either side wants to join the network, whether you're a seller or a buyer or whatever, uh, because you you can't because the network is big and well connected, you can't really uh, afford not to be to join that network. Um, of course, uh, what has been in the news lately is, is uh, fears of uh, slowing Chinese economy, but the point uh, we're making here is that um, the risks are mainly to the investment spending and the heavy industry side of China, because China's long-stated policy is to increase domestic consumption spending on goods and services, and Tencent fits very much into that latter category or latter part of the economy. Um, so heavy and rising development costs, unfortunately, are going to be part of NASPASS for at least the next two, three years, um, and that's those are really and, and, and they really are big. They were they, we're talking of the order of close to seven billion rand a year that NASPASS is spending on uh, development spending. Uh, on, on growing its uh, its online classifiers in particular and, and e-tail operations across 40 emerging market countries. Um, so that is holding back NASPAS's, um earnings and its and its forecast EPS growth. Nevertheless, we've still got a pretty uh, good, pretty decent um, EPS growth forecasts for NASPAS in rands, um, not least, I suppose, because the weaker rand also helped. But uh, the good news is our analyst expects uh, NASPASS's own internet businesses um, to narrow losses over the next three years. So gradually, they, those um, that development spending will taper, say from about year three. At the same time, revenues are growing rapidly, and so the the losses uh, will shrink. And according to forecast, we should reach EBITDA or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization break even in by financial year 2018. And the east, what, what is masked is that uh, most of the Eastern European businesses in that um, internet segment of uh, NASPASS are already profitable. And then, although the uh, 40 PE looks uh, ridiculously high. If you exclude the uh, forecast development costs, and as I say, those will diminish uh, in the medium term over time, then the current forward PE uh, would reduce by about a third to approximately 26.9 times, which is a lot less daunting. So uh, to sum up, I think, you know, the, the hype about China's internet market uh, and is I think in, in I think it's justified I think you know China is a, is a very exciting market in in just a few years it came from pretty much nowhere to be second only to America in the value of internet services um, it's still growing very fast um, Analysts expect the internet market in China to overtake the U.S. one uh, pretty soon in the next few years, um, and I think this process will continue. Um, if you look, for example, uh, countries like uh, Korea and Japan, uh, Korea already many years ago overtook uh, the U.S. in uh, broad broadband penetration in households. Um, I think China's going to follow pretty much what happened in Japan and Korea, um, and particularly because uh, as the, at the rate at which uh, China's economy is growing, at the rate at which wealth is being created, and in particular as China, China as China urbanizes, um, I think you know the the internet sector in China can only 
continue to grow uh, uh, in its stature. So <clears throat> on that note, um, I'll return to Simon f to take your questions. Thank <coughs> Sorry, thanks, Greg. Ladies and gents, if you've got questions, pop them in. Uh, Greg, a great question coming through, and it, it, it's a fairly broad one, but nonetheless, we'll throw it out there. Yeah, in, in terms of, of these most well being Chinese stocks, are they, should we be worried about legislative issues uh, with these Chinese companies? Yeah, it, it, is, it is one, um, I suppose it is one risk, is that certainly... Um, Certainly, corporate governance in Chinese companies is not the same standard as uh, as in Western companies. So that's the first thing. Uh, and in particular, so using Alibaba as example, it seems that the man the managing founder Jack Ma has has enormous power, um, and the shareholders um, through the American holding company have. Less have much less power than what the um, economic interest suggests, so that that is a, a problem. Although these companies have been, uh, well, these bigger, well-established uh, internet companies have been listed for many years, and there hasn't really been uh, many problems. Uh, you know, there, there has been the odd problem, uh, but th that that has occurred, and frauds and so on. But that has occurred with generally smaller. Chinese companies and, and a lot of them were in resources and then the other the other more generalized problem is that uh, the the rule of law in China generally is uh, of course not not as good as in um, Western economies as well so yes there are some additional risks but they um, you know I don't think th I think those risks are far outweighed by the tremendous uh, and lucrative growth potential in in the Chinese market, and and I think uh, you know as China wants to open up its economy more and more, it wants to liberalise its currency and its uh, capital markets. So I think hand in hand with that, you would think that um, those kind of um, disadvantages should uh, diminish over time. Cool. A, a question coming through, and it, it, it's coming a couple of different ways, so I'm going to merge them together, folks. And if you've got questions, pop them in the Q&A box. In essence, Greg, I mean, the discount on NASPAS, the, the question is, uh, how come such a giant discount? I mean, surely the market can see what we're seeing, what you're presenting to us today, and ergo that discount should should be a heck lot narrower. Yeah, um, that's a it's a good point. I mean, it has, you know, it's always been big, so this is not a new phenomenon. So the market has always known about it. It's always been big. In fact, it's sometimes, you know, I think that mark that discount um, in concert with with a lot of other holding companies tends to widen when the market is uncertain and the and the, you know market stocks are going down. So it's been as high as 30, 35 percent. I think the lowest it's been is about 15. Um, but I think it'll always be there. And I think the justification for it is that, you know. When you've got so much of your value coming from listed companies, which, you know, in theory you can buy yourself, uh, you know, so you're always going to put a discount on that. The other reason is that if Naspers were to break up or sell its share in ten cent, for example, they would no doubt have a pretty hefty um, capital gains tax uh, liability on that. And then, then you also got some form of discount for the for the corporate center, so for cent central corporate costs, which are you know fairly high in Naspers's case. So there are there are some uh, real reasons for why there should be a discount, but I, I think yeah, I think certainly at the moment 21% is is a bit excessive, and, and I would think not more than 15% uh, would would be more than sufficient. Um, and, and you know, look, if uh, they more, they, they're very unlikely to sell something like ten cent. They would be more mm -hmm. likely to, I suppose, unbundle it at some stage, and that that should be able to be done tax-free, mm -hmm. um, or, or merge it with something else, or whatever you know. So. Uh, Graham's asking about the uh, indirect purchases. Uh, are you talking there, uh, uh, Greg, ADRs, or, or perhaps, for example, if you buy ten uh, NASPAS, you get uh, uh, ten cent indirectly. 
Yes, exactly. So, so with NicePass, you're buying Tencent indirectly, but it's it's pretty close to buying it indirectly because because as you see in this table, you know, it just makes it just makes up such a huge part of NicePass's price. Uh, you know, more than 85%. Whereas if you buy uh, Yahoo, for example, I think um, its remaining stake in uh, in Alibaba, uh, for example, only makes up uh, well, I think about half or less than half, and and similar. So, so you in in that sense they're indirect, and and in, and that's that's where they're similar to NuspaS. I was making the um, the analogy because you're also buying, you know. Pieces of you buying a holding, a diversified holding company with uh, other pieces, and you're buying them at, at pretty hefty discounts. I think, uh, I think even bigger than uh, Nuspass. Nuspass's discount to the sum of the parts. Uh, in, in, in the question from from Sandy, she's saying surprising to see Nuspass's compatibility with Tencent and uh, Mail.ru in the same basket. Is 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 there potential for for conflict down the line? Those two being so similar, or is the geographic difference really not going to make that a non-issue? Yes, that's yeah, that's that's that's. I think that's important. I think. Uh, in terms of its own internet businesses, I don't think NicePass has any any uh, any little niche of any um, significance in China. So I think Tencent is pretty much its only play in China. Um, and then in Russia, I think Mail again Mail.ru is pretty much its biggest part of its Russian interest. Although I think it does have some small other Russian uh, internet service interests in in Russia, but they they're very they're very small compared to Mail.ru, and I don't think Mail.ru worries about it. I think it might it might it might well have a classified online classifieds interest in China uh, besides uh, Mail, you know, its associate sharing Mail.ru, but I think small enough that it doesn't really conflict in any major way uh, with Mail.ru. Cool. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any more questions. We'll leave it there. Uh, as I said, we have recorded video will be online, uh, let's say Friday morning. Uh, my thanks to you for your time today. Greg, really appreciate your time. All the best. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.